Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning, point of light and guests. Good to see everybody this morning. Amen. Ready to worship and praise our Father God. Amen. He is so worthy. So worthy of all praise and all honor, all glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise his holy name. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. You're worthy of all the praise. We honor you, Lord. We honor you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah Lord. Come on, y'all. Let's just praise on him. Let's just worship him. Lord, we praise you. You're so good, God. It's so wonderful. Such a wonderful God. So kind to us. Your love is everlasting. Hallelujah. Mm, yeah, yeah. My Lord, my Lord. Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness. It's what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want for me. Oh, come on and help us sing that. Holiness.
Listen to that song, it was ministering to me, and it and it said, Take my brokenness. Yes. yes. I don't know if you remember what state you were in, but we all were broken. My mind was broken. My heart was yes. broken. My wow. will had been broken. But at the name of Jesus, everything changed. He began to transform my mind. He began to mold my will. He began to conform me. Lord, I thank you on this day for your miraculous, miracle-working power just at the name of you. Everything that was wrong and broken in me had to start to change, and it will change for you. Amen. We thank you for joining us here at Point of Light Church, where the Word of God will go forth. Satan, right now, we bind your activity and try to hinder the minds of the people of God. And those that are listening to us streaming on the platform from YouTube or, or, or Facebook, we thank you for joining us. We understand you could have been play, joined, watching anywhere and streaming anywhere, but you're here. But we want to just cause you to just stay where you stay with us and where this word of God will go forth. And we promise you this, that it will answer every challenges of life. We ask you to strengthen our pastor in the power of your might. And in Jesus name we do pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 We serve a mighty and awesome God. Amen. I'm not just saying that. It's not just something to say. If you know who he really is, who he truly is, he's a mighty God. And he loves each and every one of you. He is mindful. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord God. We praise you. Hallelujah. Yay. We praise your name, Lord. Your Lord. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, God. 
We serve the mighty God. We serve the holy God. Hey, we serve an awesome God. My Savior, my Savior. Everybody say, we serve the mighty hey. God. Say, we serve, we serve hey. the holy God. We serve an awesome God, yeah, yeah. We serve an awesome God. My Savior, my Savior. My Savior, my Savior, sing it all of the world. We serve the holy God. We serve an awesome God. Yeah, yeah. Awesome Hallelujah. God. My, Savior, my, Savior, my Savior, my Savior, for you are. You're holy, yeah. You serve a holy hey. God. Lord, you're awesome. You an awesome God. My Savior. My Savior. Hey. My Savior. For you are. You are. The love of my life, everything, yeah. My healer, my protector, my refuge, my redeemer. Say you are everything. You are everything. You are my peace, Lord, and you are my joy, Lord. You are. You are, 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 we serve, we serve a mighty God, hey, come on, we serve a holy God, and you're awesome God, we serve an awesome God, my Savior, my Savior, my Savior, we serve we serve yeah Lord you're awesome my savior my savior for you are A mighty God. God. Hey, we serve a holy God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We serve an awesome God. My Savior. My Savior. Say we serve a mighty God. And you're holy. Come on and give them praise. He 
he serves an awesome God. Hallelujah. You're worthy, God. Hey, he's worthy. Yes, you, are. Yeah. you are a holy God, yes you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a mighty God, yes you are, yes you yeah. are, yes. You are awesome in this place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are awesome in this place, God. We give you praise, praise. we give you honor, we give you glory. Yes. Lord, oh, yeah. hallelujah. Lord, you mighty, 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 Lord to mighty, Lord to mighty, Lord to mighty, Lord to mighty, hey, Lord to mighty. Oh Lord, how excellent is Your name in all the earth. Hey, You set Your glory above the heavens. When I think of all you made, the sun, the moon, and the stars, hey, no praise is high enough to express how great you are. Hey. Oh, yeah. Hey. Come on. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. A mighty God we serve. The heaven and earth adore the mighty God we serve. Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord, you're is your name in all the earth? You said your glory. You said your glory above the heavens and the earth. When I think of all, when I think of all you made, the sun, the moon, and the stars.
glory, all honor, all honor, oh praise, all praise, oh praise, all praise, hallelujah, 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 to the mighty God we serve. To the mighty God, yeah. Mighty God we serve. Angels bow, yes. Angels bow before the mighty God. The mighty God we serve. To the mighty God. To the mighty God we serve. Oh, yes, yeah. Mighty God. Lord, you mighty, 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 Lord, Lord, you mighty, 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 Just make that personal to yourself and, yes. and tell God, Lord, you're mighty. Lord, you're mighty. Lord you are Lord. mighty. Go ahead and say that again. Lord, Lord. you are mighty. mighty. Praise the Lord. Give God a big hallelujah. Give him a big round of praise. God is so good. God is so good. Praise the Lord. If you would, just for a moment, if you would, please have your seats. This is a special day. We're celebrating Palm Sunday. This is the celebration and commemoration of the triumphal entry leads to the whole ball game for us as believers. That is the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So it is a blessing to have everybody here uh, today. So I really, I've got a, just a couple of things that I want um, to make you aware of out on the table and in the back of the sanctuary, you'll probably have some people. They have these, they have these invite cards that have uh, celebrate Easter at Point of Light Church. It talks about the Community Family Fun Day, talks about Easter Sunday service, um, gives them a little blurb on the back of what our church is about and all that. Do you know that statistically 85% of the people 
that you ask to come to church on Easter Sunday will come just because you asked them to come. 85%. Now, our, our issue many times is that people don't ask them to come. So I'm giving you a way to ask them to come. So if you would, if everybody in the sanctuary would just pick up seven, seven of these, pick up seven of them on your way out. We got more than enough. Uh, if you'll pick up seven of them on your way out, please pick up seven on the way out and ask God to lead you to one person a day, one person a day. Now, if he doesn't lead you to one person a day, then just randomly give it out to one person. <laughs> Cause you could be you could be trying to feel led the whole day and never and never hand it out. Praise the Lord. So, so I want you to just you know if it gets late in the day, then just randomly start giving them out. Praise the Lord. Now I'm gonna tell you what I did see before when we gave some of these out. I saw some at the donut shop. Two problems with that: they're at the donut shop and nobody's giving them out. Second problem is I'm at the donut shop, and. <laughs> And I have no business at the donut shop, praise the Lord, <laughs> right now. So I'm, I'm asking you, don't put them out and allow people to just grab them. I'm asking you to put them in somebody's hand. I'm asking you to put these in somebody's hand this week and ask them to come to Community Family Fun Day. Do you know we have a prayer tent out there? A lot of people that need prayer. So we have a prayer tent out there along with all kinds of things that's going to be happening um, on this Saturday, this Saturday from 11 to 2. We, I mean, we got carnival rides, petting zoos, all that. We have a Jerusalem Road experience where people come into the sanctuary and they hear a five or six minute gospel presentation. They can't do anything out there. That's all free. Can't do anything out there until they've heard the gospel because that's the real reason we invite people over to hear the gospel. We want to give them a gospel presentation. Then after that, they get this little bracelet and the whole world opens up to them. They can do anything out there they want. Ride rides, chase. Uh, do we have baby chicks this year? We got, ba we got baby chicks coming this year. We got a petting zoo with all types of animals. We're still trying to find some ponies. Uh, <laughs> we're still trying to find some ponies. I made a couple calls for some ponies. We, we used to have ponies every year. Uh, the one man we used to use, he, he said his ponies passed away. Praise the Lord, they got old on them. Um, but we used them for years. Uh, so we've got to find another pony vendor. Praise, <laughs> praise the Lord. I think I'd never say that in, in my life, pony vendor. But uh, we got to find another pony vendor. Um, so I just want you to be able to give out seven of these before next time. How many? Seven. Eighty-five percent of the people will come just because you ask them. Just because you ask them. If you have any type of relationship with them at all, eighty-five percent of them will show up just because you ask them. All right. Praise the Lord. Can y'all say amen to that? Praise the Lord. We got a few housekeeping things to do. If I can get um, Deacon Paul as one of our board members to come on up and we get the new members, teachers to come on up. This, this is, we are a little bit behind on our, we're going we're gonna to dismiss Spark in just a moment. Um, but if y'all would, grab all the certificates. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You can come, come on up. Come on up. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Really fast, we're going to go through these real fast. Give them, give them to um, Deacon Paul. Deacon Paul is one of our board members, and so give him a big hand. He's one of our board members. I always want you to know who the board members are. I want you to know that, uh, you know, there's a board behind this church and help to manage and do everything here at the church. It's not one person or anything like that. It's a group of folks. These are our new members' teachers. We have no better new members' teachers. My God, all this experience in education, praise the Lord. So we thank God. And then that's the, that's the Southern Butter Pecan in my coffee right there. Can y'all come over? <laughs> that's the Southern Butter Pecan in my coffee, right? She got out of the light, praise the Lord. That's my wife of 26 years. Hallelujah. The Bible said, be the husband. I, now, I know it, that, and this ain't no knock on nobody else, but I am the husband of one wife, praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm the husband of one wife. I my wife said, amen, and you're going to stay that way if you want to stay living. Praise the Lord. All right. I get it. I get it. <laughs> there was a little thread in the voice a little bit there. 
Praise the Lord. All right, really, really quickly, really quickly, when y'all come up to receive your certificate, uh, do we have anybody taking pictures? We got anybody taking pictures? Just take a picture right here with it real fast, and then we're going to call up the next person. All right? All right. Praise the Lord. Let me see the name of the person. We have uh, Sister Regina McCoy. Come on. Then we have Sister Deborah Morgan. All right. We may sit late. What about Jeanette Morgan? I saw Jeanette a little bit earlier. Jeanette Morgan. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on down. Skip the next one. And then I'm going to call some more folks. I'm going to call them as they come on down. We got several of them here to. Uh, Brother Dale Spaulding, come on. Stand right, stand right there if you would, between everybody. Let us get a quick picture. Okay, I'm, I'm going to set up a hug line. <laughs> Brother Dale Spaulding, Sister LaShawn Spaulding, come on. Hallelujah. We're going to give her to both of them. Uh, receiving on behalf of Brother Dale is his wife of many years, <laughs> Sister LaShawn. All right. Next. Uh, Sister Rosalie St. Andrew. God bless. Somebody take the camera from him for Minister Cameron Sweet. All these, all these folks, all these, <laughs> now we got somebody stuck already. Praise the Lord. All right, praise the Lord. Somebody please silence your cell phones. God bless. Minister Cameron, come on up. I want y'all to know these are all the people who's finished the new members class. All folks that's finished new members class. Praise the Lord. God bless. God bless. Uh, and we have Minister Chad Williams. Minister Chad Williams. Come on down. Sister Dawn Williams, come on with him. <laughs> come on down. Sister Terry Ryder is on deck. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Oh, Brad Dale, he just got back. Lord bless. You want to come up and take a picture? You can come on up and take a picture. Come on up, Sister Terry. Then Bradell. We're going to take a picture with both of them. Praise the Lord. Brother Braden Webb. All right. We got Brother Braden. All right. Brother Robin. All right. Look at my man right here. Come on down. Look at him. Come on down. Let him get it. Give him his certificate. All right. Sister Martika Jackson. Come on down. We're singing Lord Your Mighty. All right. 
These are all the folks that's finished new members class. All right. Uh, Sister Anissa, Anissa Malone. And I think her husband is right behind her. Brother Gerald Malone. Come on up together and take a picture. I want y'all to be on the lookout for Brother Gerald Malone. He's running for council. He's running for council in Cedar Hill. So I want y'all to look on the ballot and remember who you saw up here. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless me. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Uh, Sister Caitlin Malone. All right. Lorena Malone. We're going to get the children all by themselves. We get them, get them together. And then Sister Latoya McCoy. Brother Jimmy McCoy, got Brother Jimmy, Brother Jimmy, Is he? here he comes. Um, Sister Angela DeMary, Angela DeMary. Thank you so much. We have everybody there. We got everybody that's here. We got them squared away. Praise the Lord. Sister Regina. Regina McCoy. All right. We called her first. Tell them to come, tell them to come back real fast. Sorry. We had yours first. <laughs> we had yours first. You got to put y'all by each other. He said, let no man separate. Hallelujah. And here we are separate. All right. Praise the Lord. Give all our new members a big hand. Our board member, our new members, teachers. My God. They are awesome, awesome, awesome people. Be a good steward of what God has placed in your hand. Be a good steward of what God has placed in your home. Um, that, is, that is tithe and offering. We always want to mention that. We always want to put it up on the, on the screen because we have several ways to give here at Point of Light Church. You can choose. The Bible tells us to give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall God cause men to give into your bosom. Now, you can give several different ways. You can point to your device right there at that QR code, and it will take you to our giving page by pointing your device right there. Or you can go on to pointoflightchurch.org, pointoflightchurch.org, and you can hit the donate tab, and you can give that way, download our app. You can give that way, or you can go old school, take an envelope. Does anybody need an envelope? <laughs> and you can tuck your money, tuck your offering right there in there, or your check right there in there, give on the way out. Can y'all say amen to that? Can y'all say amen to that? Praise the Lord. Now, if you're between the ages of 3 and 12, if you're between the ages of 3 and 12, if you will please stand and make your way to the aisles and meet your youth directors right there in the rear. Praise the Lord. Right there in the rear for everybody else. They're going to take you to youth service. For everybody else, if you're ready for the word of God, please stand to your feet. Turn in your Bibles, if you would, to Matthew 21, verses 1 through 10. Matthew 21, verses 1 through 10. But as you are turning there, let's go ahead and make our faith confession. Say, this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today, 
I will be taught principles from the Word of God. And when applied to my life, they will produce a positive change because I'm a doer of the Word, not just a hearer. And I have confidence that my life will never be the same in Jesus' name. The Bible says in Matthew 21, verses 1 through 10, as Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethage on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead, and he said, go into the village over there. And he said, as soon as you enter it, you will see a donkey tied there with his colt beside it. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone asks what you are doing, just say, the Lord needs them. And he will immediately let you take them. This took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. And verse 6 says, the two disciples did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the colt to him and threw their garments over the colt, and he sat on it. Most of the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him, and the others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Jesus was in the center of the procession, and the people all around him were shouting, and they were shouting, praise God for the son of David, blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God in highest heaven. And verse 10 says, the entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered. Who is this? They asked. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that your revelation knowledge is presence and we sense your spirit right now in this place. Thank you for allowing us all to come together to learn more about you, to learn more about who this is today. Father, we give you praise, glory, and honor. We thank you, for you are the giver and sustainer of life. We recognize that it were it not for you, the Lord on our side, there's no telling where we would be. So, so Father, we thank you for our lives. We thank you for our families. We thank you for every single blessing, for we know that all good things come down from you. And Father, I just thank you that, the, that you're anointing our ears right now to hear the word of God, hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to your church today. Father, we just ask you to galvanize it to our spirits so that we will be able to apply this word in every setting. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Amen. You may go ahead and have your seats, but as you're having your seats, look at somebody on the left and right and say, good to see you today. Praise the Lord. I'm looking at people on my left and my right uh, saying good to see everybody here uh, today. The Bible says in 10, the entire city of Jerusalem was in an uproar as he entered. And they said, who is this? That's my question to you today. Who is this to you? Because today is the setup for everything to come in the modern church we symbolically celebrate palm sunday but but as i said this was the setup to fulfill all prophecies concerning the messiah at the end of the passage that says who is this and in verse 11 the crowds answered it's jesus and they said it's the prophet from nazareth in galilee now, that answer that was given is not inaccurate, but it is incomplete. For example, when you first meet me and my, and my wife, I, I, you first meet me and I have my wife with me, I will, I will introduce this woman on the front row on my right. Uh, I will say, meet my wife, Danita Harris. That would not be inaccurate. She is my wife, but it would be incomplete because... Uh, you know, it is true, she's my wife, she's my wife, but she's much more than that. She's a great mother, she's an accomplished business person, she's a, an accomplished author, published author, she is a compassionate person, there's a lot of other things to us. So, so although the fact that she is my wife is not inaccurate, it is not the totality of the truth of who she is. 
See, they asked who Jesus was, and it was not inaccurate to answer that he is a prophet of Galilee, but it's also incomplete. It's not the totality of truth about Jesus Christ. See, if he was only a prophet, then we would not be celebrating his triumphal entry today. If he was only a prophet, we would not be in such expectation and anticipation of what the rest of the week has for us. If he were only a prophet, then we then he would have died like many of the other prophets before him, such as Buddha, Muhammad, and Confucius. There would be some remains in a grave or a tomb somewhere, but there are people that travel from everywhere to go see an empty tomb which says, he is not here, he is risen. So it was not inaccurate to say, but it was incomplete. People only had a partial revelation of who he was, and they celebrated him, but they celebrated him far below um, of who he really was. If they had had the full revelation of who he truly was, then Pilate would have had a rebellion on his hand that would have turned his city upside down. If they had known the full revelation of who he truly was, the crowd would never have stood and said, crucify him. In fact, in 1 Corinthians, the Bible says if Satan had known the full revelation of who Jesus truly was, then he never would have crucified the Lord of glory. Can I give you some revelation on this Palm Sunday morning? Stop getting upset at people when they don't understand the totality of who you are. Can can I tell you something? Maybe... Maybe God has hidden you like he did Christ in plain sight. Sometimes you are hidden in plain sight because God does not want anybody to truly know who you are because they will be like some of Jesus' disciples and try to prevent him from going to his ultimate destiny. See, if they knew the full revelation of who you truly are, There are some people in your family, some people in your circle who will attempt to stop you from getting to the place that God ultimately wants you to go. See, God has a plan for each one of us as a believer, but God also has a process for each one of us as a believer. And the Bible says this in Proverbs 29 and 18, the message version of the Bible. It says, if people can't see what God is doing, They stumble all over themselves, but when they attend to what he reveals, then they are most blessed. So God had it pinned. He had it recorded. He had it outlined by many people in the Bible, all the things that God wanted for our lives. And according to the passage here in Proverbs 29, if we don't embrace these things, we will continue to stumble all over ourselves in this life. And when we embrace what God reveals, a void will be filled in our lives, and it is recorded in God's word that we will be most blessed. See, it has always been my contention that God never asks us to do what he has not already given us the grace to do. Uh, Let me talk to the single people for a minute. If God tells you to keep yourself when you're single, that means you can keep yourself. That that means if he tells you to keep yourself, uh, then that means he has somebody for you. He never gives us unfair commands. He never does that. He never gives us unfair demand. God never gives an unfair demand to his children. He does not want us to stumble all over ourselves. So he gives us a promise that is in Psalm 16 and 11. And he said, he, it says this in the New Living Translation, Psalm 16, 11, you will show me the way of life or the path of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. See, I get the most joy in helping people to find God. And when they begin to experience what is recorded in Psalm 16 and and 11, the pleasures of living with God, too often we think that joy is circumstantial. And it's not. The Bible tells us when you find the path of life, otherwise known as the things which God wants for our lives, then that is where your joy will come from. 
Happiness is circumstantial based on what is happening, but joy comes from a whole nother place. And when the process begins to take place, we, we don't just show up at church, but we begin to follow Christ and, and we are in his presence and we sense his presence in our lives, not just sometimes, but all the time. So the results of that is this process, which first begins with this, knowing God. And what I mean by that is he wants you to truly know him. He wants his connection to you and me to be, uh, to be a relationship and not just religion. See, I believe that's when life change takes place, when you have that relationship and you're not just doing it by the rules. Then secondly, we experience freedom. See, we all came in here with a certain measure of the spirit of God. Some of us have the spirit of God alive on the inside of us, and some of us have the spirit of God dormant on the inside of us. The Bible tells us when we receive Christ, when we accept Christ, then the spirit on the inside becomes alive to God. And then that spirit will quicken our mortal bodies. So there is something on the inside working on the outside. You got to go ahead and go ahead and cement that to your, to your neighbor or your family member that's right beside you. Tell them this. There is something on the inside working on the outside. See, nothing can truly change on the outside without something working on the inside. So the spirit is made alive, and then it has this effect on our actions. It has an effect on our habits. It has an effect on our problems. It has an effect on our hang-ups. And, and, and I like to sum it up like this. It affects all of the things in our lives that we know deep down. If they were not a part of our lives, our lives would be much better. Some habits we know deep down, if these habits weren't a part of our life, we, we, our lives would be much better. Some addictions we know deep down, we know our lives would be so much different if we can get rid of some of these addictions. Deep down we know that. So I hope you can receive this today. Jesus paid a high price for our freedom and Many of us are not experiencing the benefits on earth of that high price he paid for our redemption. And so, thirdly, we begin to discover our gift or our purpose. See, no matter what anyone has told you, you're not an accident and you're not here on this earth by accident. God himself decided, I want you here. So you are here on purpose for a purpose, and it is part of God's will for you to discover that purpose. Can you say amen to that? We sing a song here at church called, that, that talks about one of God's characteristics, and that is he is intentional. God is very intentional. He got you here for a purpose. And he has a purpose for your life. Don't ever let anybody tell you're an accident or you're this or you're that. No, God and his sovereignty got you here. And, and I mentioned on Wednesday in Power Up one time, it, it, and I said there are only so many minutes allotted to us. And if we will, uh, we must live our lives according to divine design rather than default. Because if you choose not to live by, design, by divine design, you automatically live by default. And living by default wastes your minutes. So first, you got to know that you, you begin the process is to know God. Then you experience freedom. Then third, you discover purpose. Fourth, you begin to make a difference as a Christian, not Christianish. We have to make an impact on people. In Jude 21, 23, it says, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some, listen at this, have compassion making a difference. We ought to stir up compassion. Let me tell you something. The reason we bring these out is because we are compassionate individuals. We know people are hurting. We know there will be hurt in the future. So you've got to get them into a place which can pray for them and help them and support them before they deal with hurt. But, but that takes compassion and wanting to make a difference. The New Living Translation said, we must show, show mercy to those whose faith is wavering. We don't show judgment to them. We show, we show mercy 
to them. And the other saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, making even the garments spotted by the flesh. See, I've come to understand that people would not completely understand who you are because you are called by God to do what you're doing. God didn't go around everybody in your circle and tell them, okay, this person is this and this person. He didn't, he didn't go around telling everybody. He told you. He revealed it to you. And there will be people who love you and still won't know who you are. Jesus had disciples with him. They loved him, walked with him for three and a half years, still didn't know who he was. Peter wanted to fight, took his switchblade out. <laughs> Jesus is telling them, I'm going to the cross. And when they come to get him to go to the cross, Peter is fighting. He said, no, you're not taking it. What did Jesus tell Peter? Get thee behind me, Satan. In other words, there are people that would try to prevent you from going to your ultimate destiny. They love you. John was laying around. John was the youngest one, the disciple John. And John was laying around on Jesus' chest. Now, for his own selfish reasons, John didn't want Jesus to leave because Jesus was his comfort and his support. The ultimate destiny this brings me to the significance of Palm Sunday because Palm Sunday which we symbolically celebrate today, Palm Sunday was pregnant with significance. And I hope you caught the word that I used. I said it was pregnant. Uh, pregnancy is the expectation, not the delivery. It, it, it was not the delivery moment. It was the pregnant moment. It was pregnant, first of all, with prophetic manifestation. Tell somebody prophetic manifestation. In Zechariah 9, verses 9 through 12, the Bible says, Rejoice, rejoice, people of Zion. Shout for joy, you people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He comes triumphant and victorious, but humble and riding on a donkey, on a coat, the foal of a donkey. The Lord says, I will remove the war chariots. I want you to understand something. Zechariah is written hundreds of years before Jesus is thought of. As a, as a baby, before, before the word becomes flesh and dwells among us, this is written about him. Praise the Lord. I like that. Somebody got that last one in for me. Eh? That's an emphasized point. Praise the Lord. Okay, now silence your phone. Pray. I, I don't think we're going to have another moment like that where, <laughs> where you're going to hit it right there. I will remove the war chariots from Israel and take the horses from Jerusalem. The, the bowls used in battle will be destroyed. Your king will make peace among the nations. He will rule from sea to sea, from the Euphrates River to the ends of the earth. The Lord says, because of my covenant with you that was sealed by the blood of sacrifices, I will set your people free, free from the waterless pit of exile. Return, you exiles who now have hope. Return to your place of safety. Now I tell you, this is the crux of the matter right here. Now I tell you that I will repay you twice with blessing for all that you have suffered. In the spirit realm, see, this prophecy says that when Jesus comes in on that coat, which we are commemorating and celebrating today, that meant that we have a promise made to us that you will receive double for your trouble. It says no matter what you have been through to this point, you have a promise straight from the throne of heaven that sets you up for a reversal of the bad in your life and positions you for the double portion blessing uh, and, and the life that God has for you. Jesus said the thief only comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that you might have life and that you may have it more. But it's recorded in the Old Testament that God said, when you accept me, then there is double for everything that you have been through. So, 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 so do you know that God, though, needs people to bring prophecy to pass? The, the man had the donkey and the colt sitting there. The man had the colt and the donkey available for God to use. 
I hope you can receive this because remember, when you see things in the Old Testament, they may, they may be put there so you can see what God wants to do for a New Testament believer. And I want to give you the revelation today on this Palm Sunday morning that God has resources that are currently prepared, positioned, and postured on the path that God has outlined for your life. Here is the way it happens. God may tell you to start your business prophetically. He may tell you that this is the one for the rest of your life. Get married prophetically. Take or not take the promotion prophetically. Move from the area or don't move from the area prophetically. Then what he does is that he uses people to bring prophecy to pass. So he goes before you after he gives you the word prophetically, then he goes up and said, if you stay on this path, then I've got this in this year for you. I've got that in this year. All of it is on the path that I have outlined for you. And all I'm telling you to do prophetically is to start right here. 16 years ago, God told us to start a church in the Duncanville Library. At that moment, unbeknownst to us and them, God began to prepare, position, and posture people and resources. And then God tied them up on the path. Yeah, I went to lunch several weeks ago, maybe several months ago, with a group of members one Sunday, and, and I listened to some of the people talk about how they came to live where they are right now. And one couple said, we looked at all kinds of houses all over the Metroplex, and none of them were right for us. And, and they were a couple who really, I mean, based on everything that I know about, they could have afforded to move almost anywhere in the Metroplex that they wanted to move. But when they came to a house that's about a couple of miles, two miles, one, uh, one or two miles from Point of Light Church, they said, we had looked at a lot of houses, but then something just told us, this is the one. This is it for us right here. Can I just tell you something? Even before they got married, God tied up that house on their path and said, this is the one that you're going to want. Now, you know why? And he said this, I've got a place two miles up the road, and I have postured you. I have positioned you, I have prepared you for being embraced, educated, and empowered to live an overcoming life in every aspect of life. See, our job this week and every day of our lives to go out and continue to untie people. There are so many people bound to a path that God never did outline for them. God didn't outline a path of addiction for them. God didn't outline a path of anxiety for them. God never outlined a path of anger for anyone. God never outlined that path. But we've got to go out at some point and begin to untie these folks. So what God does, he sends an invite card. He sends an invite on Facebook. He sends an invite via postcards. That's his way of beginning to untie people. So when we are untying them and they ask you, they ask us, why are you talking to me about God? Why are you continuing to invite me when I've never come in the past? Why are you so passionate about my coming to church or coming back to church? Then here is what I want you to tell them. Tell them the same thing that Jesus told the disciples. Tell them this, the master has need of you. God wants to have a relationship with you. God has a need of you. God wants to save you. God wants to use your life for his glory. It is not me who is calling for you. It is God who needs you. So it is a time of prophetic manifestation. Second, it is a time uh, or a moment of celebration or praise. This is a time which you really should begin to enter a new realm of praise in your life. 
Because this is the setup. This is the preparation. This time is significant. The palms are significant. They were waved in praise to God for his son, Jesus Christ. And then the Bible says people, people start throwing their cloaks and their clothes were thrown down on the ground for Jesus to walk in on. Can I tell you something? That is a very significant act because clothes tell us who you are. If somebody walked in here with a long white coat on and a stethoscope, you could probably assume uh, uh, accurately that they work in the medical profession. They may be a doctor. If somebody walked in here and they got a uniform on, a policeman's uniform, you could probably accurately assume that they, are, they work in law enforcement. So clothes are significant to who the person is. But during this moment of celebration, people decided, I am nothing compared to who you are. I'm going to take off the garments that tell me who I am, and I'm going to throw them down on the ground. I'm going to let you walk on. That's how much I praise you. That's how much I worship you. That's how much I thank you. Everything I am, everything I'll ever be, I'll throw it down and allow you to come. What I am pales into insignificance when compared to who you are. The Bible says in Matthew 21 and 8, they threw their clothes on the ground. They are saying when it comes to celebrating and worshiping God, I put down who I am to lift you up. Remember before... Palm Sunday, he had already done a lot of things. He'd already raised Lazarus from the dead. He had already opened blind eyes. He had already walked on water. He had already calmed the sea. So the word was already out on him. There will come a day, just like with the disciples, when you will have to answer two questions. Who do men say I am? And you can tell them like the disciples. Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah. Jesus said that was the setup question. I want to know who you say I am. Everything everybody else says won't mean a thing if you don't know who he is personally. Peter, Peter steps up and says he had a revelation. He said, you are the Christ. You are the one who has God's anointing and you have it without measure. I don't want to talk about David, your great grandfather. You are much more than who your family is. You are the Christ. You are God's anointed. I remember uh, several years ago, I heard an interview that was conducted with an Oscar winner. And the interviewer asked, uh, who do you think, uh, what, what do you have to say about God and Jesus? And they said, I don't believe in either one. The interviewer said, what would you say if you get to the afterlife and you find out that God is real? And the Oscar winner said, uh, if, I, if, if I see God in the afterlife, I'll say, oh, oh, okay, you are real. Can I say, I have news for them both. If they don't accept his son before the afterlife, you're, you'll be at the judgment seat where the Bible said you won't be saying anything. You're not allowed to talk. But you will hear about yourself. <laughs> then, then you will not say, but, but then, then you will not say, but you will either hear one of two things. Well done, thy good and faithful servant, enter into my rest. Or you will hear these words. You won't say a thing. You're going to hear, depart from me. You worker of iniquity, I have never known you. See, the time for choosing is down here. The palms symbolize praise. The cloaks symbolize that who he was is so much more than who we are. So it is a moment of prophetic manifestation, a moment of celebration, or a moment of praise. Then right in the middle of these moments, there comes a moment of confusion. The word Hosanna in the Hebrew context of the Old Testament was seen in, in Psalm 118. Not going to go there, but it is a word that means save us and send prosperity now. So this moment was filled with an expectation. They wanted to be delivered and now. 
Have you ever been there? Have you ever, have you ever been praying and crying out to God? And you're saying, God, you're the one who changes things. And, and so your expectation is that God will change things right now. Here's the question. How long do you give him? How, how long before you move from being shaken to getting shook? How long do you believe before giving up? How long did they give him? Gave him a few days. In a few days, Hosanna becomes crucified. Have you ever been there? We get in trouble, and in that moment of test, in the moment of trial, in the moment of tribulation, we surrender to Christ, and we promise to serve him. Then when our issues don't get worked out, when we want them worked out, right, then we say, since he didn't do it, go ahead and crucify him. I'm not going to serve him anymore. We acknowledge him as king. And then instead of taking orders from him, we give him orders. And give him our time limit on when they must be done or we won't continue to serve. See, although there is a moment of celebration, you can't celebrate when you truly don't know who the person is. These people wanted this. They wanted love without relationship. See, what is love without relationship? What is the relationship without the love? What happens is the result of love without relationship and relationship without love is that one minute you cry Hosanna. And the next minute anybody disappoints you, you say crucify. The moment is significant because it becomes a moment a prophetic manifestation, a moment of celebration, then a moment of confusion that leads to the moment of decision. The book of John, it says there were some who knew who Jesus was, but they wouldn't say it. Mm. But, you know, the Bible tell, goes on to tell their motivation for why they didn't say it. It said because they feared that they would be put out the temple. Hmm. Another translation said they desired the accolades of men more than the glory of God. That's a question for all of us. See, the moment that you choose, and the moment requires that all of us make a choice, whether you will live for the glory of God or you're going to live for the accolades of this world. Is your desire to be rewarded by God on the level that God rewards. Because God, remember, God rewards us in the earth realm as well as allowing us to go to heaven. Or do you care too much about what the world thinks of you? Or do you care too much about what Christianish people think? See, see Christianish folks, folks go to church, but they don't know how to live right. We supposed to be Christians, getting closer to, but we kind of Christ, anybody Christianish? Raise your no, don't raise your yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can't. Yeah, I saw people do some little turtle hands right there for a minute. They was they was just about to see me. Anybody Christianish? They were like, well, I'm Christianish. You gotta have some Christianish people at church because we got to be delivered. Can y'all say amen to that? We need everybody. Praise the Lord. So have you made the decision that if if God's word says it? then that's the way it is. See, there's a huge debate in the world going on right now. And that, that debate is over morality. What's right and what's wrong? The morality of a nation is set by the masses of people. Truth is set by God. It never changes. The masses of the people and the morality of a nation changes. Certain things are accepted today that were not accepted several years ago. The morality of a nation changes. God's truth never changes. So people who love God abide by the truth of God's word and not the morality that's set up by the masses of people. Right? So it, this is a moment. I said the mo this moment is pregnant. Now we deliver next Sunday. 
the delivery is next Sunday. The delivery is next Sunday. But this is the pregnancy moment. And it's pregnant, um, we said, it's pregnant with prophetic manifestation. It's pregnant with celebration. It's pregnant with confusion. Pregnant with decision. Finally, it's pregnant with the moment of accelerated preparation. After Jesus' triumphal entry, he didn't go sit and wait to be taken. Jesus taught, and he started preparing the church. He taught about the priority of the church. This is the time that he went to the temple and to see if he would be received, and he wasn't received, but they, but they had all kinds of money changers in the church. So Jesus goes in, and they said Jesus never did again. This is what is called righteous indignation. When you see people taken advantage of and you straighten out the matter. That's what he did. He went in there and started turning over all the tables. Bam! <laughs> started turning over stuff. And he said, here's the priority. He said, these people are taking advantage of people. That is not the priority of the church. He, he set the priority of the church. He said, this is to be a house of prayer and not a place where people take advantage of one another. So he set the priority. He taught who he was, and he had some run-ins with the Pharisees and the Sadducees during that period of time. He taught us how to serve him. He said, if you're going to serve me, you cannot want to be served. You have to have a servant's mentality. And he said, the one who is the greatest of all will be the servant of the most. He said, that is the way. See, in the kingdom, the way up is down. In the world, the way, the way, up, is, um, the, the way up is down to our knees, right? In the world, this is completely opposite. You tear down other folks so you can rise. Jesus said, no, that's not the way. You become a servant and have a servant's mentality. That is the way. And then I will exalt you, Right? He taught how we are to find ourselves in him. He taught about the importance of faith. He taught, he he knew we would need faith to live once he was gone. See, see, he, he made this an accelerated moment because his time was drawing nigh. And he said, you're going to need faith to live once I'm gone. And he touched on all these things over the course of his ministry over the last three and three and a half years. But during that period, Between the triumphal entry and before the crucifixion, he he taught on those things. Or actually before the trial, he taught on all of these things. He reiterated all of this in a very accelerated manner because he knew I'm leaving you. He said, I want to be sure that you get this preparation. This is what you're going to need. So it is a moment of prophetic manifestation, a moment of celebration, moment of confusion, moment of decision, finally the moment of accelerated preparation and in closing, Jesus finally approached the destination of his trip from Galilee, the city where he had predicted, listen at this, he predicted again and again and again that he would be crucified. And I wonder how many of those people who enthusiastically threw their clothes down, waved palm branches, crying Hosanna on Palm Sunday, but yet in just a few days, they would cry crucify him. Just a few days later, some people must have been disappointed and even resentful that Christ didn't overthrow the Roman government and set up an earthly kingdom. Jesus, the The Messiah had not fulfilled their expectations. And for this reason, the triumphal entry became the tragic entry. So I hope you don't make the same mistake that these people did today and and, and turn Jesus' triumphal entry into a tragic entry. See, that mistake was made because those people failed to recognize that Jesus could not assert his outward sovereignty without first people accepting the rule of the inner citadel of a person's heart. He's never going to fight you over the throne of your life. It's something you give him, but he will not take it. 
He said, I have to do something about your heart before I change your condition. Something has to work on the inside. Go ahead and stand to your feet for it to be effective on the outside. See, the key to his kingdom was not revolution, but repentance. Turning from following the world or following your own made-up righteousness or from following the devil and to following Jesus. Down through the centuries, none of this has ever changed. Because if we follow Christ solely because we think he's going to shield us from life's hardships, if we just think he's going to heal, of, heal us of all our sicknesses and, and we think he's, he's, he's going to guarantee our prosperity, I want to let you know something. You are headed for disillusionment. But if we renounce sin, if we take up our cross daily and live for him, then he becomes our Lord. He becomes the creator and redeemer of our lives and our future. And we will never be disappointed in him. So I guess the question on the table still remains, who is this to you? As everybody closes their eyes and bows their head. Who is he to you? Who is he to you? That question we all have to answer individually because God does not have any grandchildren. He only has children. You won't, you won't make it into eternity with God because your mom or your dad is a child of God. You will make it into eternity with God because you become a child of God. So the question on the table is, who do you say he is? And today, if you want to send a clear message to God about your willingness to follow him and accept his son, Jesus Christ, I invite you now to settle eternity and proclaim that Jesus is Lord. If that's you, you may have walked in here one way, but you can leave changed. You can settle eternity. You're not joining this church. You're joining the kingdom. You're standing with your hands in the air and you're saying, Pastor, include me in that prayer. If you're online, post, Pastor, include me in that prayer. I want to be saved. If you're here in the sanctuary while everybody's eyes are closed, everybody's head is bowed, just slip your hand in the air. You can put it right back down. You're saying by that, Pastor, I want to be saved. I want, I, I want God to come into my life. I see those hands. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You can put them up and put them right back down. I see those hands. Don't be afraid. See, it's not important that I see them. It's important that God knows. I have no place to send you into eternity, but God does. And you're going to hear one of those two phrases. Enter into my rest or depart from me. And if you don't want to hear depart from me, your hands should be in the air. And I'm going to ask everybody, if you would, just repeat after me. Say, Heaven, Heavenly Father. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for me. I repent for everything I've ever done wrong, and I receive him today as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe he lived. I believe he died. And I believe he was raised again, and that was a substitute for my sin. So I say out of my mouth what I believe in my heart, and that is Jesus is Lord. Go ahead and say that loud and proud again. Jesus is Lord. Go ahead and give God a big amen. Give him some praise right there. Thank you, Father, for bringing people into your kingdom. Thank you for using us with the ministry of reconciliation that the power that we were vested with by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the ministry of reconciliation to bring people back into fellowship with you. Father, I ask you to order their steps each and every day. I bind you, Satan. I cast you out right now. You can try to influence, but God is, is matching and dispatching angels to demons to keep them on the path of life in the name of Jesus Christ. If you would, just keep your eyes closed, bow your head again. If there are people that identify with this message, 
You said, I didn't know all that happened. I, I, I have been worried a little bit about what people think about me and, you know, whether I can maintain my salvation or will I be Christian-ish or, or will I be saved but not know how to live saved. I want to pray for you. I'm not going to ask you to come to the... I'm not going to ask you to come to the altar, but just lift your hand in the air if you want, if you need prayer. See, those are some things that we need prayer for. But there are other things that we, we need to know the significance because there's a purpose for your life. Everything that was mentioned in that word today, God is willing to do in your life. He said, I, I have a plan for your life and I have a purpose for your life, but also I have a process for your life. I have a process it's growth that will occur. You'll experience freedom. You won't experience freedom overnight. It's a process. You got that way as a process. God will get you delivered as a process. But at some point, you got to stand and say, I want to be delivered. God, I want to get closer to you. I want to know you better. At some point, you've got to stand and say that. But that's what I'm asking you right now. If you want to know him better, if you want to get closer to him, if you want to know purpose, your hands should be in the air. Father, I just thank you right now. People's hands are in the air right now. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you're ordering their steps in your word, that you're revealing purpose to them according to your word. And Father, you said when, you, when, when Jesus came in and the triumphal entry that we qualified and you prepared us, you postured us, and, and, and you positioned us on a path that we will have double for our trouble. I know Satan has been dogging at their heels and Friday happened for the crucifixion. That was not, Friday was never good on Friday. But let me give you a word right now. Sunday is coming. They didn't call Good Friday, Good Friday on Friday. They did it on Sunday when the resurrected Lord and Savior. There will be a time in your life. They're, you're not calling your life good right now. You're not calling the situation that you're in good right now. But can I give you this word? Sunday is coming. And you're going to look back on it. And you said, you're going to say it was good that I went through that. Now I know how to serve God properly. Father, I thank you for impressing upon their minds your word today, for impressing upon them to follow you. We learn from everybody else, but we only follow Jesus. Father, we thank you for it today. I just ask you to add a blessing to each and every one of these people here today under the sound of my voice. But not only stop there, Father, move out in, into their families, redeeming people as you go. And Father, Use us as instruments of your grace this week, bringing us into people's lives with an invitation that will change their life. Strengthen in the power of your might today. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Give God some praise. If you receive that, give God some praise. Almost finally, we're about to be dismissed, but... Almost finally, if we have anybody here who wants to join Point of Light Church, is anybody on the path? God has moved you into a certain area and tied you up on the path. He said, you, you need to be embraced, you need to be educated, and you need to be empowered. If that's you today and you want to join Point of Light Church, just, just signify by raising your hand, and we'll either have somebody come over to you and get your information and put you on the church roll. If you're online and you want to join Please let us know and we will get somebody to you and they will put you on the online membership. Can y'all say amen to that? Do we have anybody who wants to join today? God bless. God bless. God bless. We're not going to belabor the point. We'll be right back here on Wednesday. You can come back on Wednesday for our Wednesday power up. Finally, be a good steward of what God has placed in your hand. Be a good steward of what God has placed in your home. Remember, the Bible tells us, 2 Corinthians, that God, God wants to release a grace into your life. He said, if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. And he said, every person as you purpose in your heart, so let them give. Not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And it then says, God is then able to make all grace. All grace. Grace has so many different facets. He's not talking about saving grace. He's talking about people using their power 
their ability and their influence, targeting it toward you to help you. He said, I am then able to make all grace abound to you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things, you may abound to every good work. That is God's promise to people who are givers, tithers, and givers in the kingdom of God. Can you say amen to that? So we have a couple of different ways you can give. You can point your device right there at that QR code, and it will take you to our giving page. You can go to pointoflightchurch.org, pointoflight, L-I-G-H-T, church.org. You can hit the donate tab and give that way. Download our app, hit the donate tab there, and give that way, or you can go old school. Does anybody need an envelope? If you, have an, if, if, if you need an envelope, just wave your hand, and our welcome team members will get an envelope to you directly. Can you say amen to that? All right, praise the Lord. Y'all are in good company because I, I do mine on an envelope too. I do everything else online. I give online, but I write checks to the church because I don't pay any service charges. So I just thank God. I want the church to get all my money. Whatever I give, take it, get it all. Praise the Lord. I ain't paying no service charge. PayPal, nobody else. Praise, <laughs> praise the Lord. So that is just my thing. I don't want to pay the service. I want the church to be able to use it all. Can y'all say amen to that? All right. Please welcome up Minister Paul as he comes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a great word we had today. We, all the guests and visitors, please wave your hand at, at me. We just want to thank you guys for joining us here today. Point of light, let's make them feel welcome. Amen. Amen, amen. Also, I just want to first time visitors, if you want to, if you haven't already, Point your device at the QR code. We take a little bit of information there so we can stay connected. I just want to encourage everybody to make sure that when you get home, make sure you share the message from on your Facebook and your YouTube. Share it to some uh, share it to some people who may not get a chance to watch the word. Amen. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channels. Amen. That helps the church. Amen. I got a couple quick announcements. Also, we have a prayer uh, QR code there that if you want to have prayer for anything, going through anything, this goes directly to our pastor, and, and he can pray over that situation and be in agreement with you with that situation. How many know the power of prayer? Amen? But also the power of agreement in prayer is, 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 this is phenomenal. Amen? Also, we just want to make sure that we want to thank everybody that had an opportunity, who all participated in the stuffing of the Easter egg. We stuffed over 15,000 Easter eggs. So give yourself a round of applause. Also, if your child is going to be here Easter and do not have an Easter speech, see Minister Cameron and Sister Julie, because every child needs an Easter speech. How many children? Every child needs an Easter speech. Easter speech. If your child does not have one, let's make sure they get one. Amen. Let's get ready to be dismissed. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. And may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance toward you and give you only what our God can. And that is his peace. In the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.